Welcome back to Pollard Gymnasium for tonight's game between Lapel Bulldogs and the Speedway Spark Plugs. Tonight we're uh, fortunate enough to be joined by Superintendent of the Speedway Schools, Mr. Ken Hall. Um, Ken, first of all, thanks for coming up those ep extra stairs tonight. It's kind of like church. Uh, anytime you come to a ball game here at Speedway High School, you'll see Mr. Hall sitting right there in that corner. And uh, people all get used to doing the same thing all the time. So thanks a lot for making your way up here tonight. A um, lot of questions, a lot of discussion, things I'd, I'd like to ask you about tonight. And I guess maybe starting with the first one, which is probably in education in Indiana, the elephant in the room this year, or the elephant in the gymnasium. And that has to do with the uh, I-STEP test last spring, the scores, the uh, discrepancy in the scores. We read things in the paper, we hear things on the news. Can you give us a first-hand account of what happened and what's going on? Well, that is absolutely the best question, and it's the question I get asked about the most in public because it has been covered in such de detail. Let me give you the perspective of the school, and I think a first-hand perspective. If you can remember back to 2014, there was a, a movement towards a common core curriculum, and schools for about a year worked diligently to implement this curriculum and then right at the start of the 14-15 year, the Common Core curriculum was, was scrapped, moved aside for an Indiana curriculum, which was very similar to what we had before Common Core. And so we started working diligently on that, and everyone told us the new test in the spring of 2017 was going to be about Common Core. And then all of a sudden, the legislature came into session and said, no, this is going to be a completely different test. And then it was going to be a test that somehow was going to be 12 hours long. And thank goodness the legislator stepped in and, and said, no, th this just, we can't test our students that long. And so then the test was shortened and changed. And all of a sudden, we gave this test in March that was about things that were completely new to our students with a completely different format and training, but probably a good assessment on career readiness. And our students got in there and they did their best, and students across Indiana did their best. But it was pretty clear that given that, that kind of tumultuous lead up, that scores were probably going to drop. And as a matter of fact, the results, uh, there was trouble getting the results back, and the results came back. And are they valid? Are they reliable? And when the results came in, it became pretty clear that our students, uh, their scores were not like they had been any time in the previous 15 years. Mm -hmm. And really interestingly, concurrently another assessment, the National Assessment of Educational Progress, which is one of the most reliable assessments was done in Indiana. And on that assessment, Hoosier students were going up, sometimes in the top 10 in Indiana. So you had this dichotomy a long-standing test that had gone on. Hoosier students were climbing and had their best scores ever, but on an I-STEP test, Hoosier students were 20 points lower than ever. And so, finally, just this year, the state legislators again came in and said, we're simply, th those results are not indicative of what Hoosier students, children, schools had done, and so they acted to mitigate those circumstances. And that was great news for children across Indiana and students across Indiana. So the reality was, tough situation, but the people who could, who could help and make that right down, well, right here in Indianapolis did it, and we really appreciate it. Can you comment on the results of the Speedway students? Well, Speedway, as it has been for a long time, was a little bit unique. You know, everything comes together to tell the students how they did and how their schools did. And even with even on the raw scores when they first came back, Speedway students still across the corporation achieved at the A level. So Speedway was an A school. Then the legislators did their work, which was appreciated, which helped other schools return, mm -hmm. where we just became a higher A school. But Speedway students did a great, and you know what? When Speedway students do a great job, that means they had great support from parents, and that means that Speedway teachers, despite that path, stuck to, they, they stayed the course. They taught every day like they always do, and the students responded. So uh, good for other schools and great for us. You know, I was uh, talking to someone last week, 
someone that didn't know me and they asked me what I did for a living and where I was and it was not a person from the community, it was a person outside and I, I told them I was employed by Speedway Schools and they said immediately they, they knew of our reputation as far as having a great school system and they asked me what made it special and I was not very eloquent in how I was able to answer the question but I am smart enough to know that it's a village, it's municipal support, it's civic com committees, uh, it's a lot of people besides just the people in this building. Comment on, on all those other resources that help us to achieve what we do. You know, you're right. It's the students and the teachers are the key point. But it's, it's just imperative that Speedway goes on into the future because there's no other place like this. Let's start with, we have a town council who's involved and cares about education and a town manager. And they set a course in which the different departments work together for the common good. And so consequently, this may not sound like much, but speedway streets are always plowed. They're always cleared. If there's any issue about pathways of students getting to school, we know about it ahead of time, and they're always doing great work. Speedway utilities, water and sewage. You know, nothing closes a building quicker than not having water. It simply doesn't happen to us. If a water main has an issue, they find ways to back route things, and, and I know about it the day before and the night before. So we're fully informed by our utilities and our street department. But probably on a day-to-day -day basis, the two things that make the biggest difference, and, and, and classroom teachers know this, the more safe and secure the students are, the better they're able to learn, the better they're comfortable. And Speedway Schools has the best public safety protection anywhere. Our local fire department inspects, and when I say inspects, cooperates, guides, leads us through making sure these schools are safe. Mm -hmm. And not just safe for a fire, but safe if we'd have a natural gas incident. Mm -hmm. Safe if we'd have some kind of a collapse or something. They not only guide us in getting ready, but they train inside the buildings. While we're asleep, they're here at night mm -hmm. checking things out. They have access to every building. They know how to account for every student. Speedway Fire actually keeps us ahead of the game. And the cooperation with the Speedway Police Department is amazing. Of course, we have, I think everyone now knows school resource officer Mark Jones. He has built a relationship with parents and kids that shows that teenagers and junior high students and elementary students can know that policemen are their friends. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's also the Speedway Police that come in and do the things like prepare us for the absolute nightmare of an, an active shooter. They're the ones who come in at night and train and learn the building. Actually, the state police came in this year and did photo imagery of the building so that our local public safety people have an idea of what's in the building, even if it's completely dark and the power is off. The thing about firemen and policemen, and we need to remember this, is they're the guys who run to the problem, not away from it. And they help keep us safe, and, and they're literally a minute away at all times. So when you put those things together, pretty safe place to be, and a safe place is a good place to learn. You know, I'm going to throw in another group of people into that hat about contributing to our school and, and publicizing what we do, and that's the Speedway Cable Television Network, and Brian Pearson and Bill P. do a fantastic job of covering up for the mistakes that we make broadcasting games up here. But something that the Cable Television Network is doing also on our website, just started recently, has been some video productions of past Speedway graduates and their career pathways. If people have not seen those yet or researched those, tell us a little bit about those. Well, you know, what started out as a career education process, and, and you can't be modest either, because you were one of the first people who started to bring alumni into the math classroom to help our students, especially our statisticians, our calculus students, realize how their math background can contribute to their future. And one of the people who regularly did that was Jason Delisle. But we couldn't get, I mean, Jason runs, is a part of a large company. So we said, let's videotape mm -hmm. some of these people. Let's videotape Melissa Sauer at Allison. Mm -hmm. Let's videotape Keith Chambers over at, at Praxair. Let's go check out Alan Shaw and his own business. Mm -hmm. And we said, let's get some video and a production of what these wonderful Speedway alumni have done with their education. 
And then all of a sudden, somebody said, well, you know, you really ought to put those up on your website. Mm -hmm. Because although the students get to see them, parents can see them that way. Mm -hmm. Great. And then Speedway Cable said, hey, you know, we're, we're technologically savvy. We can upload those, and we can run those on the local cable television. And since that's happened, all of a sudden the community, because of cable television, has a great understanding of some of the marvelous things their alumni have done. Mm -hmm. And those are going to continue. They're going to continue because of career education, because we want these students to know what they can be and see it, not because we tell them, mm -hmm. but because we see people doing it. And we want people to understand that people are what Speedway's about. So that cable's really been an absolute asset to our students, parents, and our community. That's an innovative program that I have not seen anywhere else. And it kind of leads me back to uh, an ex-principal of mine once told us at the end of a school year, no matter how much success you had this year, you need to change at least 10% of what you do for next year to continue to get better. And I know we've changed a lot of things in addition to this. Tell us about some of the changes at Speedway High School in the last year. Boy, th this has been a really innovative year. Now, but I want to go back because you say you've got to change 10%. Uh, the last five years have seen the advancement of the advanced placement program, students earning college credit. But this year, we're ramping it up in two different ways. We're actually going to give high school freshmen an exposure to an AP class in world geography and we know that's going to be tremendously hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there'll be some students who pass that test and get their first college credit at 14 years old. We also are going to add microeconomics. And I know that the audience hears that and says, oh, boy, could I do that? Yeah. But make no mistake, it's a great course, uh -huh. and it's a great college-level course. So our existing program that I would call one of our jewels is ramping up. But at the same time, we have to have kids be both college and career ready. And so Speedway Schools made a large investment in career readiness. The robotics program and the technology program has enjoyed great success. So much so that we hired a second teacher here at the high school, a young man named Eric Roseboro from Purdue, to come in and add to that success in things like transportation construction, manufacturing, above the high-tech robotics for our students. We've also added a great young teacher down at the junior high school who's introducing our students to technology, to coming forward and getting ready for Project Lead the Way. She's also very adept at business, and she's introducing our students to business computer principles because we added a teacher at the high school, Craig Fugate, who is teaching entrepreneurship. Now, when did you and I ever take entrepreneurship in high school? Uh, these are programs designed, and they're taking off and going well, but that's not it. Next year, in those same areas, we hope to add a course called Innovation, where we take our students and we say, here's a real-world problem, let's solve it. And, and we hope that will lead our students to do things that perhaps they never thought of doing. Who knows, a Speedway student may come up with a great new application that, that sells and is patented and copyrighted, but that has great potential. Even today, we started talking about how we could start linking our junior high schools to an, to an observatory so that they could start to study the neat things that are going on in NASA. So, I, I just, I've got to tell you, and finally, we're moving high school courses down deeper into junior high so that our high school students can take their regular physical education in junior high and more and more students algebra. And you know what the net result of that is. That seniors taking STAT and CALC, and I'm not sure that we're not going to be teaching something like finite mm -hmm. in, in the future. But, uh, but and, and I'll, I'll never, I won't apologize for the fact that the more we can push math and science into our students, the more opportunities we can give them for the future. I don't have any numbers to back this up, but I would think for a public school our size in the state of Indiana, there are not very many that offer more AP classes than what we offer. Uh, Director of Guidance Trenton Borm has researched this. Oh, really? There are no other schools okay. our size that offer an AP program. And you know, that AP program is why if you go by the fence out at the end of uh, Moeller and 25th Street, why yet again Speedway High School recognized 
by U.S. News and World Report as one of the best high schools in America. So that's a pretty high honor from an organization that's completely free of any influence. Right, right. Well, kind of to wrap it all up tonight, let's talk about real quickly something I know that's dear to all of us. Tonight we're going to be honoring at halftime of the varsity game a group of girls that accomplished something this year that was incredible for not just them but for the community. Talk a little bit about what we're going to see out here you know, a little bit later. <laughs> starting about the 1st of October till Thanksgiving was just a blur. Everybody was just feeling good. And there was this run where the Speedway girls volleyball team just kept winning and refused, refused to, to lose. Right. And they were put in some situations where you just had your hand... Your head, their head and your forehands and just say, how are they going to win this? Yeah. And all of a sudden, they'd run off eight straight points. They'd get rolling, and off they'd go. And so what fun it was to just kind of follow and cheer for those young ladies. And tonight is kind of the payoff for them. Because yet again, we're going to be putting a sign up on the wall of the high school, recognizing a state runner-up. And the young ladies are going to get that individual recognition and the coaches of a, a state runner-up ring that they can carry with them for the rest of their lives. Now I'll tell you, this isn't the highlight of these young ladies' lives. They've got a lot more great things ahead of them. But I'll tell you what, if somewhere in the first 18 years you can put on one of those rings, that's a pretty great thing. And I just know there's going to be a big crowd here tonight. And, and thank you to the crowd. I was never prouder than I was at the state finals at how many people came to support the kids and at the semi-state and the regional. I just don't know how you couldn't feel anything but good. I, w I would agree. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Hall, for once again migrating all the way up here to the top of the gym uh, to give a different point of view, but also thanks for filling us in on a lot of the questions that a lot of people have that they didn't know about and filling us in on things that are new and continuing to, to improve our school system. It, it's always a great, I, I love the chance to come up and talk. I get to replay the game, you know, and watch the tape through the week. So we appreciate it going on. And, uh, and I, I've just got to say, we're here because the community supported us. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be asking for that community support again in May. And we hope you're there for us. Great. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. We're going to be back in just a little bit with the introduction to the starting lineups in tonight's game.